Hey everybody, my name is Suede, and I'm going to teach you a bit about editing scenarios in Civ 3. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is you find your file folder for Civilization 3. So, if you have the game on Steam, it will be like this. Program Files, 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Sid Meier's, Civilization 3 Complete. Uh, if you have like a CD copy of the game or good old games, it might be different. I think what the difference would be is you go to Program Files and then it's like Infogrames Interactive or Firaxis or one of those companies. And then after that, uh, this stuff, all of the things in here in the actual game folder will be the same. So the first thing you do when you go here, you'll notice that there's a, a Conquest folder and a Civilization Play the World. Those are the folders for the two expansion packs that come with Civilization 3 Complete. So you can actually access the, the, edit, like the old school editor from Play the World if you go here. But I don't know why you'd want to do that. You probably want to go to the newest editor, which is the one for Civ 3 Complete. So if you click here, you can get to the editor. So I'll tell you a few things about how these scenario files are laid out in Civ 3. So notice how we went to Civ 3, there's a folder called Conquests, and within that folder is another folder called Conquests. Do not get these two folders confused. Remember, there is a Conquests subfolder within the folder that is also called Conquests. I know that's confusing. So the reason it's called Conquest is it's for these the Conquest scenarios that were packaged with the Conquest game. So you know all those scenarios like uh, Mesopotamia, Rise of Rome, Fall of Rome, etc. And then all the, the assets and the art files are also within this folder. To make things more confusing, if you go to Scenarios, you notice that these same files also appear. Mesopotamia, Rise of Rome, Fall of Rome. But they're slightly different. So this is MP's Mesopotamia. And this is just Mesopotamia. The reason for that is these are the multiplayer versions of those scenario files. So they are like 90% the same, but the ones with more sieves are restricted to only eight sieves because you can only have eight sieves in a multiplayer match. So if let's say you want to make some changes to the um, Napoleonic Europe conquest, for example, you would go to the scenario, oh, sorry, to the, the conquest subfolder within the conquest folder and not to the scenario folders. Because if you change the ones in the scenarios and then you try to load up through the conquest menu in Civ 3, then you'll notice that the changes you made do not appear in game because you actually were editing a different scenario. So I'll show you how to do that now. We can open up Civ 3 Conquest. And yeah, you can open scenarios that already exist. This is the conquest subfolder. This is the scenarios folder. All the cool things will be in one of these two folders usually. But yeah, um, what you can do here is you can, for example, so you'd open this up if you wanted to, for example, change uh, who the playable sieves were. So you go to uh, custom player data, if that isn't already enabled. And then you go to players, and you can change who is a human player. So this means that you can select these players in game. I've had a few people ask me, like, oh, how did you play as the, the, the Dutch in this scenario? Or how did you play as the Iroquois in the Age of Discovery scenario? And this is how. You just edit the game files like this. Uh, you save. And then within your copy of Civ 3, all of this stuff will appear. All of the changes you made. So uh, there's three custom things you can edit. You can edit custom player data, custom maps, and custom rules. The player data is available in Scenario Properties. It's just this right here. It lets you choose like the starting treasury, what units they start with, what text they start with, etc. Uh, we'll do a new one. If you do custom map, uh, you can generate a map. So it'd be like this. You choose all the settings you want. Or you can just start messing around with the map. You can add, let's add some bonus grassland. Yeah, stuff like that. You can make a custom map. Let's say you want to make, you want to just play a regular game of Civ 3, uh, but you just want like 50 cows where you start. What you do is you do this. You choose somewhere you like. You add in all the cows. Yeah. And then you'd, uh, ooh, you'd set a player spawn location, which would be here. You choose the, the Civ you want to play as. Let's say you want to play as Babylon. Great. And then you'd save this as whatever you want. And then when you open the scenarios folders uh, within, when you open up Civ 3, you'd see that uh, the scenario appear. And then this would be the one, whatever you called it, would be the one you want to load. 
The co more complicated thing to do would be to edit custom rules, and it gives you this scary error message when you do this. Uh, it's not really that... I haven't noticed that many problems with the, the editor. Uh, there's some common pitfalls, but I'll go over that in a later video. Uh, but yeah, basically, it, it's, it is pretty accessible. I'm actually generally like quite pleased with how good of a tool they made it. Especially the help files. Like, If you don't understand what Sling is, check the help file. So for example, let's say you don't know what, I don't know, um, reveal entire map does. I guarantee we can go to the help file and you go to the scenario properties page, player pro um, scenario properties, reveal entire map. Yeah, it tells you what all these things do. There is so much thought and effort put into whoever made the scenario editor. It's actually kind of a godsend. So definitely do use the help tile, the, the help tool, if you're trying to figure out how things work. Uh, but yeah, if you go to custom rules, you can edit everything you want. The governments, the civs, the units, the techs, all the good stuff. So one thing you might, for example, want to do is you want to make your own civ. We'll call it Indonesia. Now, one thing you might think when you're making your own civ is that, oh, I don't need to put in a civlopedia entry. I don't need a civlopedia entry. I know what traits I want the civ to be. I know what unique unit I'm going to give this civ. So I don't need a civlopedia entry. That's incorrect because the way the game actually organizes uh, the game itself, I guess, is it links all the assets through the civlopedia. So when the game makes diplomacy with Indonesia and it needs to decide who we want the leader head to appear as, it, go it indexes these things through the civlopedia. So if you leave this blank, the game will just crash when you launch because it doesn't know who the leader of Indonesia is and like what assets it should draw upon when doing diplomacy with that nation. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could just like steal from, you could just copy this over and the game would work. It would show up as like, he'd show up as Henry and when you check the civilopedia, it would give you the, the information for Portugal, but the game would run, you know, which is often the important thing. This is especially clear and it's a nuisance in units. So there's this interesting thing here. A lot of people have this misconception that when they choose this icon, they're choosing what they want the, the unit to appear as in game and what they want it to look like. Let's say we took the scout and we changed its uh, icon to the marine. So the icon actually is only the thumbnail that appears in game and it doesn't actually dictate any of the, the other assets. So for example, when the game takes your scout unit and it wants to know uh, what noise it makes when it dies or uh, what animation it does when it's attacking, it's gonna go to the civlopedia entry because as I mentioned, all of the assets for the game are indexed through the Civilopedia entry. So if you want to make your scout look like a Marine, you'd also need to use the Civilopedia entry for a Marine. To make things harder, uh, all the, the only assets that are instantly accessible by changing up the Civilopedia entry are ones that appeared uh, within the vanilla, or sorry, within Civ 3 Conquest within the base game. So one thing you might want to do is like, oh, I'll make a new unit and I see all these cool icons. I want my unit to look like um, this weird tank guy, or maybe you want him to look like the the MG Battalion from the World War II in the Pacific scenario. That is actually not possible without doing custom game files. Uh, like you have to edit, you have to start editing the, the files here. It, I know it's frustrating because it's like, oh, this guy appeared in the scenario for World War II in the Pacific. Why can't I use him? I see the icon right here, but that's just the icon. The actual way that you access the, the animations, like how it physically looks on the map, is through the Civilopedia, and there's no Civilopedia entry for the MG Battalion within the base game of Civ 3. It's only in the scenarios where that stuff appears. So yeah, I'll do a later video explaining how you can import custom art and uh, custom animations and that kind of thing, and custom Civilopedia entries. Uh, in a later part of the video, but I thought I'd just give you the, the basics here. I'll tell you one good way if you want to make a new unit. Let's say you want to make a new unit that's like a, an advanced swordsman that you uh, unlock at the end of the ancient era. One thing you could do is you could like make it so that there are only 12 playable civs. Let's say you remove the Celts from the game. Then you could use the unique unit for the Gallic swordsman and then use that as your custom swordsman. So by using these unique units, you have like a, a, a wide array of different animations and physical like appearances on the map that you can choose from. Uh, and as long as those civs don't appear, then there won't be any overlap. Like it will be visually clear when you're using the, this new unit you created because it will look different 
from all the other units in the game if you do it that way. And this way you don't have to like do all the, the custom modding and kind of get into coding if you get too far into it. So yeah, it can be quite tricky. So this is pretty simple, but I thought I'd include it in case you were having difficulty. Uh, so what I was talking about here with the Babylonians, so what you do is you save the game, you save it as, let's say, Babylon cows. You save it within the scenarios folder, not within the conquest folder. So you open up Civ 3 Conquest. Make sure if you have like a, co a Steam copy of the game and a CD copy of the game that you don't get the two confused. Uh, that, that was confusing for me in the past. So you go Babylon cows. So it's Civ content. Sorry, it's not the scenarios folder. It's, it's called Civ content here. And then Babylon cows. And then just make sure you play as Babylon. And because you set the custom start location to be... Uh, next to those cows and you made sure to choose the Babylon as the active player when you made that uh, start location that's where you're gonna spawn perfect we spawned with the cows great I hope you guys enjoyed I'll see you guys next time